Hi, I'm Tony Allen Bernier, and we're going to be going over a pattern that I just made. It's a real small pattern, so you can practice using these really fine modeling tools that I make. You can get the pattern for free if you message me through Etsy, or if you order one of my modeling spoons. I had a craft aid made, so I'll send you a piece of leather with that pattern already traced onto it. I'd also like to thank the Leather Crafters and Saddlers Journal for sponsoring my channel. Great publication, great people. They do a ton for the crafting community. I suggest checking them out. It's important to make sure your blade is real sharp and stropped well. And I stropped this blade many times throughout the process. I also prefer to use a matte finish blade. It's kind of a black matte finish. That way the mirror shine of those polished blades don't give me that reflection. It, it makes it a little easier for me to see exactly where my blade is. I also use a angled blade. I feel like I can see the leather underneath it a little bit easier. When you're cutting really fine details like this, it's important to keep your cuts shallow. If you cut too deep, it's going to be hard to make the sharp turns that you're going to need to do. Notice where the reverse bevel starts, and you're not going to want to fade the bevel when you're going across towards that point. You're going to want it to fade out further from that point that way the element underneath looks like it slowly works its way up and around. If you want a more in-depth instruction how I do my cutting and tooling and how I refine the patterns you can watch my leather vases video. I cover exactly how and why I do a lot more in that. This video is more just to show how I use the modeling tools I make to do really fine detail stuff. I cover how I do my antiquing in my Hummingbird Purse video if you want to check that out. So you can see when I need that to fade out, when I need the bevel to fade out, I'll flatten this tool a bit so that bevel fades back onto the element I need it to. And then since this is getting real narrow, I slowly keep tipping this tool up more and more as I need that bevel to finish off faster. So I grab the ultra fine square tip I'll put it on its side to get into one of these corners and there's a couple things I'll do to really clean these up. Press to get that edge sharp and you can flip it flat to clean that up a little bit. But what I'll do is I'll come straight down too and just go at an angle right into that groove and just gently tap it because then it kind of fades that into there a little bit more. So again, I come with this tip down the side. Make sure I'm pulling everything down where the cuts are. Flip it flip back smooth to clean that up. And then I'll come straight down at like a 45 degree angle and just give it a tap so it kind of fades into that a little bit more. Just really cleans those up. So I usually don't use these when I'm doing like this beveling. I wanted to show that you can, but it's a little bit more strenuous on your hand muscle. I'll come in with a beveler to try to do as much of that as I can, or if I need to get the detail situated, I'll go lightly and then come back with a beveler so I can easily ride along that edge. But these are more for getting into those nooks and crannies that you really can't with a beveler or getting those really fine details really nice because yeah you could come through in this stuff with a beveler but you're going to go too deep and it's going to good chance it's going to look kind of muddied so if you come in with this you know you just have a better view of exactly what you're doing and you can really 
control that depth. The other thing that's really nice about using these versus trying to come in with a really tiny beveler, as you're beveling a line with this, if there's a little bit of a discrepancy, you can kind of give it a little press in to kind of straighten that curve out a little bit. And since this is a real tight area, I don't want to knock this down at all. I grab the ultra fine square tip. I'm going to define where that bevel is and come in again on its side. I'm not going to press down quite so hard. Define where I want that. Tip it up and just round that edge off just enough. Maybe even smooth that a little bit. It got kicked up. You can see this is a brand new spoon. I still have a little bit of polishing compound on it, so it's leaving a little bit of a dark. So it might be a good idea to really rub these clean. Maybe get a piece of leather, a little scrap, case it a little bit, spray it down, and really rub the tool on it before you use it, just to make sure you get all that polishing compound off of there. But again here, tipping it on its side, Getting the points real deep helps just define all the details quite a bit. As you can see, I went in just a little bit too far, so now it kind of is weird right here. So what I'll do is I'll grab the big spoon again, try to redefine that, tip it on its side, and just round this off just enough so it looks intentional like that. So because it's real fine in here again, I grab the ultra fine spoon and I'll place the middle finger from my other hand on here. So I got two hands directing this to really make sure I get it right where I want it. So usually I would come in with a beveler, so I'm not trying to struggle with hand strength with those modeling spoons come in with this beveler wherever I can fit it in but you do have to tip it away so it pushes back away because with this real fine detail stuff if you're going straight up and down it's going to start kicking in a little bit you can use this to deepen some of that after the fact so I'll come in with this figure beveler and try to just get rid of some of these halos wherever I can reach before I come in with a backgrounder. I'll do a textured backgrounder. That's why I just kind of was real muddy with a lot of this backgrounding because I, I knew I was coming in with the texture. What I did here is I filed down a couple pointed backgrounders. Pretty tiny. This one's real tiny. Just the very end. Might not need to use this one all that much, but I'm going to get away I'm going to try to get away with using this one as much as possible before I have to try to tuck this one into any grooves. But you can even go in with one of the modeling spoons and just press down with a corner to kind of try to give it a little bit of a texture. But you can see I started here a little bit. I was able to do the backgrounding completely with that little bit bigger one. I didn't need to use that really tiny one at all. But now I'll come back with my ultra fine tip spoons and you can see like right here some of it got kicked up a little bit. I'll just touch all this up. And clean up any wonky lines or something. You know if I see a little bump sticking out you can clean some of that up. If you want to round some of the edges off and whatnot too, you can. Like this edge can be rounded a little, just to give it more flow. And you can get into some of these points and stuff too. Just getting a little more depth in some of those points just kind of help the details pop a little bit. And if you're going to antique, you don't have to quite worry about it as much. But uh, if you start pressing into a lot of these points and let it come out too far, you're going to see that 
but I'm going to antique it so a lot of this will be covered up. Like I'll round this just a little bit. Just gives a little better flow. Just keep working on these details, cleaning them up. That's pretty much it. And even this is the ultra fine square tip. And even though I can't get in that entire area, I'll get the points defined. And kind of hold this up vertically, pressing it straight down just to kind of give it texture simul similar to the background. It'll actually blend in pretty nicely. Like right here, it's kicking up. So I don't have a super defined bevel line right there. I'll just tuck that back down a little bit. So like this piece, this whole element here is kind of sitting inside of this leaf. So I like to round that leaf off just so it has that dimension to it. It doesn't take a whole lot to give that feel and you can think of like a coin. It doesn't take a whole lot of change in bevel to really make you think like to really make you feel that full three-dimensional representation. And places like in this corner, you don't always have to be pressing down. I can press into the element a little bit just to straighten it just like I want it. I'm fading it back out to a point. I'm not rounding it right at, up to that point. I'm just using small ball modelers. I got this little set on Amazon. And just a couple real tiny swivel knife cuts. 